Hi, this is Dr. Don. I've had some questions about how to find confidence intervals using Excel, and I'll show you how to do it using basic Excel functions first, and then we'll look at how to do it using PHSTAT. I've set up my spreadsheet here. I've got some data in column B. The alpha we're given is 0.05, which is a 95% confidence, C. And in order to find the confidence interval, we need the means and the standard deviation and then the count. I'm going to click in this cell here by the mean, hit average. They don't have a mean in Excel. And we just need our range. We don't want to include the, uh, well, actually, it won't matter because it doesn't count a non numeric. That gives us our average, and I've got a formula over here in these NA cells that will show you the the actual uh, function, the equation we're using. Standard deviation equal, start typing ST standard, whoop, STD, and we look down there and we've got standard deviation P, which stands for population, and dot S, which stands for sample. This is a sample, so I want to select that one, and I just highlight my number again, my uh, column, make sure I get them all, hit enter. I've got my standard deviation, and then finally is the count, you might guess we use the count function and again we've got our range there and hit enter so now we've got our basic there our average salary for these people at 60 roughly 66,000 with a pretty wide range there we've got some 152 47 so the standard deviation is huge in this sample if we know the population standard deviation um, we, we can use the Z distribution or sometimes if you have an N greater than 30, which we do here, you can use the Z distribution as well and let the standard deviation of the sample approximate the standard deviation of the population, which it may or may not, depending upon how good your sample is. So we're going to get our margin of error. We're going to put our cursor there equal start typing confidence we've got confidence norm and constant t we want norm which that's the z distribution we need alpha comma our standard deviation make sure we get the right cell that cell comma and then our size which is our count and then close it out and hit enter so that's our margin of error for the normal distribution the lower limit is just equal the mean plus excuse me, minus the margin of error, enter, and the upper limit is equal to the mean plus the margin of error, and hit enter. Okay, if we know the population standard deviation, which you, you should most of the time if you're using the normal, you would just enter it there instead of using the sample standard deviation as we have here. To get the t distribution, it's very similar, equal confidence, get the confidence t, alpha again, comma, standard deviation, comma, size, close it out. And we've got a very similar margin of error, equal mean minus, equal mean plus and they're they're very similar which we'd expect as the n gets large the z and the t distribution start to converge you can see they're pretty close there and again we would normally use the z distribution if we know the standard deviation okay let's do it using ph stat and the way we do that we it will either be in your add-ins that you'll get pH stat, or depends on how you install it, you'll have pH stat as a tab on a sign. We look and we find confidence intervals. In the first one, estimate for the mean sigma known. So we're going to cl click on that one to get the normal distribution. Our population standard deviation, see, get asked for that. We've got to input that. I'm just going to say, let's say that the population standard deviation is only $24,000. We've got 95%, which is the same as 0.05 for alpha. 
and instead of using the sample size and the mean, I'm going to click on sample statistics unknown, and then we're going to click in that box, highlight our range of data again, just assuming that you, you don't know. Down at the bottom, you've got an option for finite population. If you think your sample size is more than about 5% of the whole population, you need to double check that. Here, we, th we know our population of employees is going to be several thousand, so a sample of 30 is nowhere near 5%, so we can ignore that for now. And I'm going to click OK, and it inserts a table here, and it gives us, there's where I put in the population standard deviation, and the sample mean should be the same size, the count, confidence, and it gives us a range of 58,000 to 73,000. And again, this is the Z distribution. You can see that as opposed to the 55 to 76. To get the T distribution, we do something similar. We go back to confidence interval. Whoops, you need to be on the page with the data. Confidence interval, sigma unknown, which gives you the T. Again, I'm going to assume we don't know those. Click in there, and I'm going to select the same data range again. And again, we don't need the finite. I'm just going to click OK. And we get another tab inserted that gives us the same information. This is identical to the T that we got here, 76, 634, 55. 76, 34, 55. So that's how you do it using the pH that add-in. So I hope this helps.